Hello, Dave Kriege. <clears throat> I'm the uh, owner and maker of the Obsession Telescopes line. I'm here down in Australia uh, in their springtime. We're here in October, and I'm introducing a brand new telescope called the Obsession 18 inch Ultra Compact. It's uh, ultra compact, meaning it'll fit in just about any vehicle. It'll fit in the trunk of any vehicle. Right down here, uh, we have our host, Gary Kopp, the man who makes the uh, Argo Navis. He let us use his Subaru, and so we brought it with us. It's in the back of the, his Subaru, and you can see that it's pretty small. The uh, overall height is, is uh, not even two feet. It's probably only about, uh, I think, 15 inches from top to bottom here. And you can break it down into smaller units. If you're really tight for space, you can uh, put the upper tube assembly next to the telescope or in the back seat or a different part of the car, and you can get it down to a very, very small, you know, roughly 12 inch uh, clearance height. So this will fit in a lot of vehicles that uh, most large aperture Dobsonians could never fit into before. A lot of people don't have a, an SUV or a minivan, or pickup truck, <coughs> a hatchback like this little Subaru. So um, they need something that will collapse down. So that's why we designed the, the Ultra Compact. That said, it's a full functioning 18 inch telescope and uh, I'm going to put it together here on camera and show you how it works. Um, basically I'll have this fully assembled uh, eyepiece in the focuser in just a couple minutes and you just nest together, you lift out the what we call the virtual mirror box because there is no mirror box. The uh, rocker is very, very shallow. And it just nests in. And now you've got the, uh, the mirror box and the rocker. Um, one of the keys to the Ultra Compact the collapsible side bearings of the virtual mirror box. And they just fold over. And now you have a full function 90 plus, about 95 degree travel, like a tra traditional Dobsonian across the sky. There. <coughs> this is the, the primary mirror dust cover on. The truss poles, they come in their own special uh, shipping tube and they make a great storage container. This is also unique. All the truss poles are interconnected at the apices. It uh, makes it assembly quite fast, easy. There's only one way you can do it. You can't do it wrong. And, uh, pole design. Six, six truss poles are uh, all that you need on a, on a very uh, skeletal type of telescope like this. It's a, a minimalist type of design. I'm trying to do this so I my the telescope's in the foreground and I'm in the background so it's a little awkward for me to do it this way. Last night we were uh, observing till about 4 a.m. We had uh, both Magellanic clouds, which are circumpolar from this latitude. Uh, the brightest globular in the sky, 47 tuck. The Fornix cluster, the first time in my life, uh, I could easily see the Sculptor Dwarf Galaxy with this telescope. I can't even see it with my 25 from the northern latitudes. And I could go on and on and on. There's just no end of beautiful things to see here. So if you ever get a chance, you're a deep sky lover, you, you owe it to yourself to come on down and have the Australians give you a tour of their universe. It's a whole lot better than ours up north. But um, the upper tube assembly just connects to the truss poles just like the uh, truss poles connect to the virtual mirror box. And it can all be done by one person about two minutes.
took out the adapter. Um, the, focal, <clears throat> the focal ratio of this telescope is f4.2. And I highly recommend a paracord coma corrector on any, any telescope under 4.2. So that's a Paracor and a 31 Nagler. This telescope's kind of unique. It uses a reverse counterweight system. It's intentionally built bottom heavy so that it'll handle just about anything you want to put up on top here. Uh, you use the, uh, the Telrad, the counterweight system works right here. For uh, lightweight items, you use a, a very, very uh, more heavy counterweight for more and more heavy things that you add to the top, like a Bino viewer, uh, Argo Navis computer and you go to a smaller, lighter weight counterweight tube. It's completely adjustable. There's three different sets of tubes you can use. You can vary the amount of uh, sand or lead shot that you put in them. But they just go in there, and we are ready to observe. That's it. So you can pull the scope out of your car, have it together in just a couple of minutes viewing the sky. Uh, it does have a light shroud, and I'll show you how that works, but in the beginning of the video here, I just thought I'd let you Take a look at the assembly before you put the shroud on. Once the shroud's on, it pretty much hides everything. Um, like I said earlier, you have full access to any part of the sky. It goes just beyond Dobson's hole. The motions of the telescope are as easy or as easier than the classic series of obsessions. Quite easy to use. <clears throat> we had people here last night from uh, the town down the hill called Kuna Barenbrand, and uh, they had no problem observing with the scope, and they had never used anything like this before, and they were uh, quite happy. It was a lot of fun. So that's the Ultra Compact. It uses a uh, three-vein spider system. We need to do that. It's very rigid because it's uh, the secondary mirror is supported above the the, uh, the connecting ring. The telescope is fully baffled. And uh, the views are great. We got uh, we had a 25 and a 318 in, 18 inch uh, obsessions here, and uh, the images were identical to the images in the 18. I'll put the shroud on, give you an idea how that works. One of the more difficult things when you have a six pole design is keeping the light shroud out of the light path. An 18, uh, a traditional eight pole design, you know, you got a pair of poles on each side of the scope. Well, with this. You don't, so we use a, a plastic hoop in the bottom hem of the light shroud to keep the fabric out of the light path. The hoop uh, just collapses down and it coils up, and it'll fit in the light shroud bag just like any other light shroud that we make. It works really good. Uh, it keeps the shroud well away from the light path. actually better than in the classic series. The, uh, the rest is just bungees on the bottom like so. And because there's nothing to connect in the back here we have uh, I must have set it down somewhere. I gotta locate it. The fiberglass tensioning stick to uh, retain it at the other end. There you go. On top, we also have. Kydex light baffle that simply places over the connecting ring with Velcro. There's also a circular baffle that goes down around here that completely blocks any street light or anything falling from hitting the primary mirror. I didn't put it in. I'd rather show you the virtual mirror box and everything else on camera. But that's what you have.